Today's jet transport engines are the most reliable and powerful aircraft engines ever developed. Over the past 40 years, technological improvements have increased the amount of thrust, improved fuel consumption, reduced noise, and reduced unwanted emissions. To accomplish these advances, internal engine pressure has been greatly increased on today's high-bypass turbofan engines. The reliability of the gas turbine engine has reached a level where severe engine failure is so unlikely that most pilots will never experience one in their flying career. However, modern turbine engines can still fail. And when they fail, whether with a loud bang and high vibration or just quietly decay to zero thrust, the pilot is expected to recognize the specific engine problem and then to take appropriate action. Over the last several years, data has indicated some pilots have attempted to diagnose aircraft malfunctions prior to establishing control of the aircraft. This has occurred despite the fact that all pilots are taught to fly the aircraft first. So why does the data indicate that they have not done this? One of the main reasons is the startle factor. Because of modern aircraft's high reliability, when a malfunction occurs, it is frequently the first time the flight crew is exposed to the true sensations of that malfunction. While simulators have greatly improved pilot training, they've not always realistically simulated the actual noise, vibration, and aerodynamic forces certain engine malfunctions cause. It also appears that the greater the physical sensations the pilot feels during the malfunction, the greater the startle factor and the greater the likelihood the flight crew will try to diagnose the problem immediately instead of flying the aircraft first. When flight crews are interviewed after engine malfunction events, such as the surge of a large high bypass engine during initial climb out, they make very similar comments regarding the event. Pilots will often report that it felt like a bomb went off or that the aircraft was falling apart. Each time an event occurred, the sound and the feel of the event were different and often much more intense than indicated by any training the crews had received. Because of this, the flight crew either did not recognize the engine symptom or was so concerned about the engine that they responded without taking time to correctly evaluate the situation. In each case, additional time spent in stabilizing the airplane's flight path before responding to the engine symptom would have avoided a serious event. Remember, all transport category aircraft are designed and certified to be controllable with the most critical engine failed. Unlike early turboprops, turbofan-powered airplanes do not require immediate pilot action to the engine in the event of a single engine malfunction or failure. Once the flight path is stabilized, the engine malfunction may be safely identified and the appropriate checklists executed. Taking the time to stabilize the flight path may sometimes lead to further engine damage, but despite that, the airplane still has the capability of safe flight. Engines are tested during initial certification to demonstrate ruggedness following bird and ice ingestion. Even after a major failure, such as the loss of an entire fan blade, which is an extremely rare event, the engine shuts down safely and the airplane is still airworthy. Service history of fleet aircraft verifies that there are generally no engine failures requiring an instant engine shutdown in order to maintain airplane safety, and that continuing a takeoff after an engine failure at V1 is safer than rejecting the takeoff. So, the capability to recognize turbine engine malfunctions must be learned. But how? The objective of this video is to provide pilots with information to help them recognize and identify various engine malfunctions that have led to inappropriate crew responses and accidents in the past. These malfunctions include fire warnings, tailpipe fires, bird strikes, vibration, engine surge, severe engine damage, and slow power loss. In each case, the first priority is to employ the basic stick and rudder inputs necessary to maintain aerodynamic control of the aircraft. Remember, fly the airplane and then identify and respond to the engine malfunction when time permits. Fire warnings result from excessively high temperature in the space between the engine casings and cowling or from fire detection system malfunctions. The heat source may be an actual fire around the engine, an engine failure allowing core air to escape through a hole in the casings, or a leak of hot air from a bleed duct. Whenever a fire warning occurs, the first priority must be to fly the airplane. 
Once the airplane is stabilized, attention should then be directed toward execution of the appropriate checklist. Even if there is an actual fire, there is adequate isolation between the airplane structure and the nacelle to ensure sufficient time to establish and maintain airplane control to a safe altitude. Taking this time may cause further fire damage within the nacelle, but accident reports consistently show that flight path control must be focused on first, and it must remain a high priority until landing. Engine torching, or tailpipe fires, mostly occur during an abnormal engine start, but they may also occur after shutdown or during other ground operations. Although there may be no cockpit engine instrument indication, these events can be very spectacular when viewed from the ramp or cabin, and have been confused with an actual engine fire. The torching may be of short duration or it may last for several seconds. Note that the flame is confined to the tailpipe. Flames may turn upward and threaten the wing if no airflow is maintained through the engine, and in some cases an EGT increase may be indicated on the flight deck. Simply cutting fuel flow while continuing to motor the engine normally extinguishes the flames. The flight crew depends on ground personnel to identify engine torching. If you are told of an engine fire without any flight deck indications of a fire, follow the engine torching procedure as outlined in your flight manual. This procedure will direct you to motor the engine and extinguish the flames. The regular fire procedure will not. Do not perform the engine fire procedure unless a fire warning indication occurs. Executing the regular fire procedure may disable bleed air to the engine starter and prevent you from being able to motor the engine to blow out the tailpipe fire. There have been cases where flight attendants or passengers have initiated evacuations due to engine torching. These unnecessary evacuations can be minimized by prompt flight deck and cabin crew coordination to provide passengers with pertinent information and to alleviate their concerns. Bird strike is a concern for every pilot. The birds may be observed by the flight crew, or the first indication of a bird ingestion may be an engine surge. Flocking birds are a particular concern since they can affect more than one engine. It may be difficult to see the birds and to know how many engines have ingested birds. We want to rotate. Birds. I check the birds. Come on, baby. Keep flying. Keep going now. Keep flying. Positive rate. Yeah. Come on, man. That's it. Nice job. Fly the airplane. There's 400 feet. Okay, what's the problem?